Our first stop in Berlin. In Berlin, uh, we are visiting uh, Matthias Oakenfels. Thank you for your know, invitation and yes. time spending with us. And we would like to hear also some ideas from European investors. And Matthias is active investor in Berlin mainly. He works for uh, Point9 Capital, uh, which is venture fund focusing on real estate startups, especially on SaaS and marketplace startups. Right? Correct. And what I found out that your specialization is uh, marketplace startups, and you also work uh, at you have experienced mergers and acquisitions. Yes. Yeah. So you are definitely a good person to talk to, and. I also already like chocolate and sports. Is there, <laughs> is there something yeah. you would like to <laughs> say to your introduction as well? <laughs> yeah, maybe thanks first of all for uh, having me and for, for coming over. Um, uh, always happy to, uh, to contribute and share some, some knowledge. Um, yeah, with regards to, to chocolate, um, I guess I have to do the sport in order to be able to eat the chocolate, right? Okay, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> So um, yeah, but, uh, let's let's dive into it and, and start. Yeah, and maybe last interesting point: uh, mm -hmm. Point Out Capital invested mm -hmm. in Couchsurfing yes. and Zendesk. Yes, those are maybe big, two, big, two biggest success success. There is uh, actually another one that is a pretty big company by now that is maybe not that well known in the US, but certainly very known in Europe, which is called Delivery Hero. Uh, right. which is a, a, a big uh, a platform to order food online uh, and it operates businesses in, in various countries uh, across the world actually and we have been the first investor in that company as well so uh, and that obviously also is uh, a big success by now but then there's also companies like West Wing for example uh, which is uh, similar to One King's name in the US uh, mm -hmm. Operating in Europe and, and also internationally, a pretty big company by now that we also invested uh, as a first investor, uh, and um, some other big companies by now like Vent, for example, or uh, Clio. Um, yeah, just I mean we have a portfolio of over 60 companies uh, now, and uh, so there's lots of companies there. But these are like maybe the more mature ones that we already invested in. Uh, a few years ago, so you can see mm -hmm. where they are going right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, as we told about your first investments, mm -hmm. uh, maybe those founders are kind of freshmen. So, uh, is there any advice for other freshmen founders how to approach a venture fund? Yes. Where and how to meet you? Yes, of course. I mean, what we always tell people is that it's good to come through a recommendation, right? So the, we get also a lot of kind of cold approaches, people just cold calling or cold emailing us, uh, which is also fine, but uh, usually an introduction works better because it means a first filter for us and you are also more likely to get a quick answer than coming in cold because we will always kind of prefer um, recommended or referred uh, introduction over a cold call, right? And so that is the first step. And I mean, these introductions you can get through other companies that we have invested in. Uh, so just look at our portfolio, see if you maybe have some common connections with those people. You can also ask them and reference us, uh, but then maybe if they give you a good reference, which I hope, they can also introduce you uh, to us uh, and, 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 and that way we get in touch. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's, uh, that's definitely an important kind of filter for us and an important source also of deal flow for us. Uh, then we have a couple of angel investors that we work with, for example, uh, and they also shoot deals over to us or share deals with us, share companies with us. Us. They see a lot of things, they cannot invest into everything, but then they share it with us. So that's great if you can maybe get in touch with one of them uh, and then have him have a look at your startup and then he refers you to us. So mm -hmm. there's uh, a lot of people that get in touch with us uh, through that way. And then obviously we go to a lot of events uh, all over Europe and we usually publish that also in our newsletter and we tell people in advance we're going to this event or to that event you can also see it on our website 
uh, we, and, and meet us there and we also do a lot of blogging, uh, 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 trying to give back to the community. Uh, there's a lot of content on Medium, we have various blogs, uh, you can also find it on our website and uh, I mean just comment, read it and this is also a way to get in touch. We actually get quite a lot of uh, deal flow through that as well. Christoph is blogging for many years now, especially on the SaaS topic and uh, um, there is always a lot of discussions under his blog post and this is how people engage with us and get in touch. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. various channels, various options to, to get to know us and get in touch with us. Mm -hmm. um, my other question was about, about do's and don'ts. I guess we heard the do's. Yeah. <laughs> what are the don'ts, what to avoid? I mean, when you kind of cold call, don't shoot emails uh, uh, to, with like 10 different investors uh, 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 at, the, uh, at the same time and, and just tell them, hey, I'm, I'm an internet startup, I want to raise money. That is maybe uh, not the best way. Be concise, be very precise, um, try to learn something about the investor uh, and see how your startup and your business fits into his investment thesis and then try to refer to that in your email or in your approach. And uh, I think that's very, very important. Um, and, and try to um, bring across that you actually spend time uh, with the investor and then he will also spend time uh, on trying to understand what you are doing. If, if he has the impression that uh, it's just a shot in the dark and you, are, uh, you didn't really spend time on trying to understand what people are up to, you cannot expect from people to spend really time on trying to or on trying to understand what you are doing. So um, and, and always keep in mind that uh, we get thousands of uh, inquiries a year. So I think this year, if I'm not lying, over five thousand, uh, and and we are just five people, five six people in the investment team, uh, and so our time is limited. And and then try to be concise. Don't. Sh send super long emails, just when you set a deck, just like 10 pages, 10 slides maximum uh, and, and really try to focus uh, on the essence uh, uh, and, and then people will have, no, have the opportunity to find out what you're up to and if they're interested they follow up and try to, try to learn more and then dive deeper. Mm -hmm. So, any other suggestion, even before yeah. you decide to contact yeah. an investor, what is the homework to do? Mm -hmm. I mean, first of all, almost by now every investor is blogging, has a website, so you can learn a lot about these people up front. They are on Quora, uh, I don't know, they are on Twitter, uh, and then you can just you can look on Crunchbase, what kind of investments have they done before, you can check out on AngelList. Just to see, kind of, okay, what is he focusing on? What is his speciality? Like you told me in the beginning, okay, obviously you focus on marketplaces, so maybe it would be if if you want to get in touch with Point Nine and you have a marketplace company, then it's maybe good to get in touch with me. If maybe you are more focused on the SaaS side, then it's maybe good to get in touch with Christoph, right? Uh, try to understand the people, the individuals behind it. Uh, what is their focus, what is their expertise, uh, what is their experience, what have they done before uh, and try to relate to that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's, that's, uh, that's important. So there's a lot of, usually a lot of information already available online uh, that you can uh, yeah, find, easily find and read, digest and then um, take the essence out of it and try to relate to that in your approach. Mm -hmm. And based on your experience, yeah. how long does it take to close the seed round or maybe okay. Series A? Uh, well, it can be very quick and it can take longer time. I mean, it's, it really depends on um, a lot of factors like wh what is your traction, uh, what is the demand for the deal, right? It's always a question of mm -hmm. demand and supply. If, if, if the deal is very hot and a lot of people are chasing the company, that you can use that momentum and accelerate. Uh, the process. Um, so you need to create some sort of momentum where maybe people compete for your for your company for your for the deal. So that can actually accelerate the process. Then, if you are very well prepared, meaning you have all the numbers in place, 
uh, you have all the kind of information that an investor is interested in already prepared, obviously that accelerates the process and makes it much faster, uh, rather than just waiting for the investor to inquire information, then, ask, then he tells you what exactly he needs, then you just prepare it, and that obviously all kind of prolongs the whole process. And, and then you also lose momentum, so it's good to be well prepared, get some feedback up front on your deck, see if it resonates with the people, then always tweak it, and, uh, and that all helps to, uh, to make it faster and, and close a deal in a short time. Mm -hmm. uh, and always good if you obviously already have one or two investors, maybe an angel, that are uh, willing to invest already, and you can just go out to people and tell them, hey, look, uh, there is only this much room left, or we already have closed this and that amount, um, maybe you want to do the rest to create some sort of sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, these are all tactics, right? Mm -hmm. Also, investors know these and they can look behind the curtains as well. But I guess this is kind of the basics that you can they do as a, as a founder and as a, as a startup can follow. Mm -hmm. And then you talked about the importance of, of pitch deck. Yes. I think maximum 10 slides. Yeah. So we know what's the maximum. Then yeah. which slides it should yeah. be? I know it differs a lot, yeah. but what are the key slides you I mean, the key about? is really about getting across what kind of problem are you solving, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure that people really understand what the problem is and then what is your solution to that. What is the solution that you're proposing to that? And make sure that people understand that this is a big problem. P big problem in the sense of, uh, first, it's a problem that needs to be solved, that uh, people are really uh, waiting for a solution, but then also uh, big in terms of the market uh, that, that you can unlock uh, by, uh, by providing such a, such a solution. So I think that's, that's, very, uh, that's very important. Uh, then obviously things like the team, kind of having a complementary skill set, great people in the team, uh, then things like the product, is it, is it looking nice, is it, uh, is it serving the purpose, um, the traction, if you, have, if you already have customers or clients, uh, try to, bring, try to uh, bring across the, uh, that in a, in a proper way so that people understand it, follow like, uh, regular uh, KPI structures, uh, depending on which kind of uh, uh, business model you you, uh, you have. So, like I don't know, in SaaS, uh, you should know what MRR is, what ARR is, what churn is, what uh, customer acquisition cost is, what CLTV is, and so on. And try to uh, have these numbers in place. Uh, I guess that's that's very important as a as a part of a of a pitch deck. Mm -hmm. And then key part or maybe important part are of course executive summary. Mm -hmm. So how to make it sexy and attractive for investors? Yeah, I mean I guess this is all part of it. I mean this uh, all these parts. That